Dr. Kutika Kupali joins me now from Charleston, South Carolina. She's an assistant professor of medicine for the Division of Infectious Diseases at the Medical University of South Carolina. Dr. Kupali, welcome. Thank you for being with us. So, as we've been discussing, Florida is reporting some very alarming numbers with infection and hospitalization rates at all-time highs. What do you think it will take to slow the spread there? Well, the things that we're going to need to do in Florida are the things that we've been talking about since the start of the pandemic. Um, we're going to need to uh, have uptake of the vaccine in Florida. We're going to need to get people vaccinated, uh, fully vaccinated. So it's going to need um, people to take up both doses of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine if that hasn't been done. Um, we're also going to need to re-implement the mitigation measures that we've been talking about since the beginning of the pandemic. So getting people to wear masks, that's going to be important, not just indoors, but also in outdoor crowded settings. Um, we're going to also need to get people to physically distance. Um, these are all going to be really important things to have happen right now as we see cases um, go up quite quickly and we see hospitals um, uh, really uh, getting inundated with patients who are sick. And, you know, doctor, we're hearing so many cases of health professionals who say people are coming in sick with the disease and then asking the doctors or the healthcare professionals why they can't get now get the vaccine. So can you explain to viewers why at that point it's too late to be vaccinated? Yeah, that's a really great question. So, you know, it takes time for your body to build up that antibody response. And those antibodies are what's going to protect you from getting sick. And so if you're getting uh, the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine, it's really going to take you uh, six weeks to build up that full protection that you need, right? So both of those vaccines are two doses, um, about 21 to 28 days apart. So you get your first dose and you wait 21 to 28 days before you get the second dose. And then it takes two weeks after you get that to get the full protection of those vaccines. So that's about six weeks, uh, really, to get the full protection of both of those vaccines. Um, if you're getting the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, um, you get vaccinated and then it takes two weeks to get the full protection of that vaccine. So um, you need uh, time to build up that good antibody response. So if you get exposed to COVID, um, that you're protected. So if you're coming in and you're already sick, um, you're behind the eight ball. Um, there's no data that shows that um, if you get the vaccine when you're already sick, that that's going to be protected. So I really urge people, if you haven't been vaccinated yet, to start your series right now and go and get vaccinated because it takes time to build up that response. Very important to know. And doctor, as an expert in infectious diseases yourself, at this point in the pandemic, what are you finding more challenging? Caring for those who are infected with the virus or communicating with those individuals who still refuse to get vaccinated? Honestly, I find the communication part of it to be very complicated because there's so much misinformation out there. And I find that trying to combat that misinformation is really challenging. And we really need to combat it in so many ways, shapes, and forms. And I find that the reason people aren't getting vaccinated is really different. I think that if I'm talking to my patients who maybe are racial and ethnic minorities, you know, they maybe are more distrustful of the healthcare system. And that might be why they haven't gotten vaccinated and they really want just more time to understand um, the long-term repercussions of the vaccine. Whereas um, maybe some of the people who are um, uh, uh, Trump supporters or maybe right-wing um, evangelicals, they maybe have been spending more time listening to some of the misinformation that is out there that has been um, coming through the, the media that they listen to. And so I think there's really a lot of different information. And then there really has just been a lot of misinformation that has been purported, people hearing all sorts of different information that I really don't want to um, repeat on um, air right now, but I think it really takes a lot right. of time to really spend time explaining to people that misinformation that isn't correct. Absolutely. Um, and of course, you know that the new school year is right around the corner, just about to start for millions of kids in the country, many of whom, of course, are under the age of 12. What would you recommend to parents of those school aged children who are very concerned about keeping their kids safe as school starts? 
Well, you know, I really do agree with the CDC recommendations that came out last week that really do advocate for the use of masks. I do think it's important that we get all of our kids back in school, but I do think it's important that, you know, we are wearing masks and doing what we can to distance children as much as possible. Um, we know that this Delta variant is highly transmissible. Uh, we know that kids can get sick. We have seen that. We have um, kids that can get this um, um, inflammatory syndrome. Um, we are still learning a lot about how the long-term repercussions of this um, infection can affect kids. So I think it's very important that kids wear masks in school. We have our teachers vaccinated so the teachers cannot transmit to kids and that we um, do everything we can to mitigate risk of transmission for children in school. And doctor, you know better than anyone, since you are an infectious disease expert, that viruses mutate. Um, is that another concern about not getting everyone vaccinated, that we're giving this Delta variant or another variant the chance to develop? Could we see another variant as contagious as Delta develop? Is that possible? Yes, absolutely. I think that if we step back and look at the bigger picture of what's going on right now, uh, that is absolutely the thing we're most concerned about is, um, you know, right now everyone's focused on the Delta variant, but if you step back and look at what's happened um, over the course of the pandemic for the last year and a half, we've seen uh, the virus mutate and become um, fitter. So right now we're talking about the Delta variant, which is very concerning, but, you know, who's to say that in a few months we're not going to be talking about a variant that could be uh, more transmissible, more lethal, um, causing more problems. So it really is in our best interest, not just for the United States, but for the whole global community that we really work to decrease the levels of this circulating virus, get the pandemic under control, uh, get the vaccines out to everybody so we can get um, the pandemic under control, not see any more circulating variants, um, and so that we can really try and recover from this pandemic and move forward. But that's what we need to do now, and we need to implement these mitigation measures to decrease um, the levels of the virus along with getting the vaccine out. Requires everyone working together. All right, well, Dr. Kutika Kupali, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.